Hi guys, Frankie V from Frozen Sand with another episode of working with Power Tools. <coughs> and uh, uh, oh boy, uh, there's a lot of a lot of uh, uh, let's say slow and steady things going on behind the scenes here. Uh, and uh, we have made some let's say a, a few interesting changes in the last couple of months. And uh, uh, I'm hoping that uh, in a future episode, I can get Blade Killer and myself on to <laughs> together, and we'll do kind of a presentation to. Uh, kind of update some of the interesting things that we've been working on as far as um, improving the overall gaming experience, I guess you might want to call it, of Urban Terror HD. But, uh, and, you know, off and on, I've been doing some level work uh, and, uh, um, you know, uh, doing a few conversions and, and what have you, as well as working on, on some of my own environments and maps that, uh, I, you know, that I just want to do because I want to do it. I really don't build a level with any kind of particular thought in mind about playability and stuff like that. I uh, usually leave that for last, and we get a bunch of guys into an environment and play it, and if there's something that needs to be kind of taken care of, then we can take care of it during the Q&A process. But, uh, um, you know, with uh, some significant improvements to the uh, Unreal 4 engine and uh, my normal habit of, uh, you know, throwing up a video every once in a while and showing some of the, how, how a, let's say, a known map that we're working on is steadily improving by just basically doing nothing um, well, uh, I can't really do something like that this time around because there wasn't really anything that I would uh, that I found uh, particularly interesting in the uh, 4.9 release of the engine that uh, kind of made me think, oh wow, you know, uh, I got I got to show somebody this. Uh, that didn't uh, transpire in 4.9, which seems to be much more uh, uh, focused on uh, mobility than it was on say uh, desktop. Uh, improvements in the way of uh, visualizations so i hope that what we got is not really the end of it because i certainly would like to see a lot more uh let's say uh physics engine type of uh, uh, uh lighting and tools and and so forth coming out that are made with uh, available for unreal 4 uh, particularly now that it seems that archviz has always had this kind of background um uh, uh uh, synergy that uh, you know that uh, a gaming engine could be used for ArchViz purposes, particularly with uh, now with uh, things like uh, VR coming becoming all the rage and what have you. That uh, you know we're within that let's say five year scope that that range uh, uh, of technology now getting to that technology end where. Uh, you know, um, you know, where uh, different applications can s share different tools. You can make things in 3ds Max, bring them in Unreal 4, use the Unreal 4 for its real-time rendering capabilities. Uh, I mean, you could do a, like a 4K rendered image in a, in about two frames per second. So that's pretty impressive. It's uh, It'll probably go significantly higher than that once uh, ray tracing becomes involved because that's right now what uh, the main advantage of having a a a, a, a rendering system like V-Ray, Metal Ray, or an application like 3D Max, Maya, all these applications that can do these, uh, let's say, prograded uh, uh, renders. Um, uh, the, uh, it's all the little uh, the performance sucking tools that are usually give you the best results uh, and uh, one of them obviously is ray tracing which uh, uh, hand in hand with the idea of, of uh, being able to do uh, real time rendering in the game engine uh, has um, you know you need that ray tracing to be able to accomplish that you know, so you can get that uh, really that uh, um, that uh, authentic let's say stained glass effect of uh, volumetrics of of color distortion within the environment now uh, unreal 4 certainly can do that uh, but um, this got me to thinking uh, when i started seeing some of this awesome looking arch fish stuff coming up being somebody with a background more in 3ds max than now in a game engine i would not consider myself kind of admit to, admitted to this that uh, hello my name is frankie v and i am not really a games developer i am a i'm a generalist artist i like to have uh, my stuff put into an environment and see how it interacts and uh, as soon as we start getting actually digital people into the environment that's where i'm going to start getting going hmm you know uh things are starting to get a little bit interesting but uh for uh to, to uh Make this more of an episode relating towards the ArchViz type of idea. There's, you know, the, that gap between ArchViz and, uh, uh, as in reality versus uh, 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 video games, which is more realistic uh, in the form of uh, hyper uh, imagery. Uh, why would you want to walk around and shoot inside a building that looks like the real deal? You know, you want uh, you want that 
you, you don't necessarily want the real type of experience. You want the realistic expectations that you see in the movies on the big screen uh, with movies like Heat, where, you know, there, where there is a lot of post-processing that goes on to make things interesting to the viewer. So those are the kind of environments I want to, you know, I, that, this is why I like games like Splinter Cell and what have you, is, is there's, a, there's a hyper imagery that is involved, even though it's up to what we would consider realistic experience, expectations. So this got kind of, make me, uh, kind of put me into the experimental mood, I guess, that I've been in in the last little while, of, uh, you know, uh, physics is physics. Uh, uh, Unreal 4 has a physics-based uh, uh, engine. So, in theory, physics being a law, unless Epic was out to, to break the laws of physics, then lighting behavior should be almost identical uh, as to being able to configure it, form it, and shape it into a given environment uh, based on some of the basic uh, rudimentary uh, techniques that are used in applications like 3ds Max, V-Ray, etc., etc. So, uh, 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 the end result is an environment that looks... Uh, uh, which is which is catering more towards a realistic type of look, but from performance-wise, their, their hit is no greater than if you had made the map for for players to run around inside it. So if you wanted, you can make uh, go out and say, okay, hey, there's this great place around my t my hometown. You go out and you can take some pictures and do this and do that and make an identically rendered image of the inside Unreal 4 that looks exactly like that environment except that you are running, you can run around and shoot guns in it as opposed to having clients running around saying, okay, well, I don't like where this is and I need to have that moved or I need a window there. So, uh, uh, so uh, basic lighting theory is no difference between there's no real difference between uh, 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 making things in a modular manner versus things that you would make that were scoped more towards that archvis type of design, and that's usually based on of course scienti scientists with clip white with white lab coats on and clipboards sitting down and calculating calculating out the exact behavior of how light bounces and how it behaves when it hits a surface or a material and what have you, and, and, and kind of just bounces around a bit and creates a pleasant looking environment. Now, um, this is where things are, are a little bit more different. Now, uh, you can obviously, if you wish, you can actually uh, load, uh, do exactly what I did. Uh, I downloaded the realistic rendering uh, uh, sample from Unreal 4 to take a closer look and see how they did their initial construction as far as geometry goes and how their light placement is and how it was done. And if there's something that was scratching my head over, uh, you know, I started relating that back to the same tools and techniques that are used in, 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 in 3ds Max. Now, there are some serious tools that are missing. So, uh, for example, um, an area light, very important for visualization because it's a it's an infinite point light that you can put out outside a window, for example, like the window that we have here, project light as a focus and element into the room that behaves uh, as a light bounce. Directional light can't really behave that in that manner as, as uh, you know, you're asking it to uh, certain types of parameters as a physics base, uh, as a part of a physics based uh, rendering element. It's a tool. It's like a hammer. You use a hammer to hammer in a nail. You don't use a screwdriver to screw hammer in a nail. <laughs> but you don't use a hammer to hammer in a screw where you need a screwdriver. So those type of uh, uh, tools decision ultimately can uh, determine the type of end results, whether or not they're accurate uh, as to being either realistic or as to realism, then uh, those type of selections are rather important. So direction of light, you know, uh, keep those things for kind of outside and as well as to kind of create a hint of direction of light coming in through the window. Um, uh, skylight. Skylight's a GI element, uh, a global illumination. It's like painting your canvas all white before you start painting the picture. Uh, I kind of suggested here and there, and some of you uh, guys remember way back when, when I did that, uh, um, let's say, lackluster uh, presentation on the idea of uh, uh, painting with lights, which um, I won't go into in, that, in any kind of detail, but you certainly can go Google that, and you can see the exact kind of effect uh, uh, pertaining to, say, uh, an environment that you want to play a video game in versus the lights uses to, uh, for the purpose of uh, visualization. So uh, it's a, it is a, it is a, actually a very it's one of the first original techniques that was used 
uh, for the purpose of video gaming because you didn't have a physics-based engine, you couldn't bounce light, so you had to artificially create your own, your own uh, type of uh, uh, renderosity type of effects by putting as many of these light elements into into a, into a room as possible at a controlled level. So, uh, you know, if we want lighting to affect the foreground uh, a lot more than the background, then we need a kind of a cascading effect from front to back. Now, with a physics-based engine, Remember, I said one of the important uh, one of the important things and requirements that were needed is uh, is an area light, or uh, even better still, uh, uh, a an equivalent of the uh, the MR lighting port port that uh, is available as part of the metal array uh, rendering system, where you put a little port plane on the window and it just tells the the rendering engine this is a window, so put in as much light as is necessary to fill this volume and bounce it around like crazy. So in this case, uh, looking at uh, what we ha uh, what we have in hand as far as what we, how we can work it, we gotta start looking at uh, the samples that are obviously coming out of uh, out of Epic. Um, although some of them are starting to get a little dated, they need a kind of an upgrade kind of idea thing going on here. Is uh, if we look at here, for example. Uh, the first thing that kind of got me scratching my head is, well, why are there four spotlights coming through the window uh, in, in this kind of configuration? And, and then, you know, I, I, I kind of just kind of uh, skipped my mind for a while until I was back to working with 3ds Max, and of course I needed to fill that particular area with some lighting, uh, which you can do your own light mapping, by the way, in 3ds Max. Uh, how to get into the game. Um, uh, there's got to be a way to be able to do that. Uh, if, if you could do that, then you could do, so, if you can import your own lighting, uh, light map, maps, masks uh, from an application like 3ds Max, then you can do like some, some, some serious type of uh, arch type um, material layering. Uh, just to kind of back up a bit, um, keeping in mind that light maps are almost basically 100% free. They're just a texture image that is laid over top of whatever material that you're using that creates the illusion of lighting. And there's no there's no lighting volume metrics going on. There's no light bouncing between me and this door or window or wall. There's nothing in between it. And it's just simply creating a intensity level uh, either, uh, uh, as, a, as a contrast or the brightness control kind of thing. So anyways, this kind of got me scratching my head and saying, well, why is there... Why is there four um, four spotlights shining through the window? Uh, that's a you know, and then it kind of dawned on me when I was back working with 3ds Max that they're faking uh, an area light. They're basically, if we look at the uh, the amount of volume space that these lights have to co are covering, uh, they're they're anywhere from uh, being uh, being so close to the window and rather unrealistic as far as the barn door effect goes. Uh, uh, the, these uh, little flaps on here of how much how much width you know you can pan it out to, if you pan it out to 90 degrees although even it's still round it still more or less fakes a kind of area like kind of idea but without the infinite point feature meaning that we don't it doesn't matter where we place it in the background it's it's infinite it keeps this going and it just protects light energy in that direction so um uh, that got me to thinking a little bit further. Well, you know, if they're faking this kind of idea, then they must be faking a few other things. So in this case, uh, one of the most common techniques used for creating uh, a, a, a visibly pleasant uh, wall, as opposed to things that are looking cut knife, if we get uh, like up close and personal, you can see that the edges of the geometry here in place is is chamfered now chamfering is an old trick that uh, that's been around for once again one of those things that uh, that is common knowledge about being able to get a properly rendered room getting the light distribution to behave properly is that the, the lighting uh, lighting bounces and uh, uh, going through the room like we're we're in think of it uh, as having a super ball you take the super ball and you're bouncing it around the room it's going to hit a corner or a or what have you, and if it hits an angle, it has a difficulty of, of, of being able to keep a planar, say, a much more smoother um, um, lighting uh, effect across the two, two different surfaces at 90 degree angles. So, particularly when we're dealing with things like smoothing groups and what have you, which, you know, that's a whole different uh, tutorial on how to do that, because it's, uh, it's uh, to get it perfect perfect it's uh creating the, the proper smoothing groups is uh pretty in time intensive it's like trying to build a puzzle without the picture so um in this case uh to correct for the uh, proper distribution of lighting across 90 degree angle surfaces the, the common thing to do the common trick uh, trade is to to chamfer the edges now this is not a bevel this is a chamfer as in say 
For example, a woodworker coming along and chamfering the edge of an object so it's got a smoother transition, so your client doesn't come along and cut themselves on, on what would in essence be a, a knife edge type of um, a type of situation across this. But in this case, it's uh, it, it follows the one two three rule, which is uh, one uh, one angle to another angle into another angle. So we have 45, 45, 45 degree angles from one offset to the other. The uh, rendering engine, when it comes out and tries to cal and it calculates it, has a much easier time, seems to have an easier time with that, and it creates a lot less uh, artifacts uh, as far as that goes. So um, this is uh, another little trick that they use. Um, where, I, I wouldn't say it's a fail, but uh, where they didn't take it to one step further that would have made this a whole lot more sense is uh, back to the idea that Unreal 4 is a physics-based engine, which means it takes an object and it calculates a lighting solution across the surface based on an algorithm. So that means that each object within a, in a space would have to be calculated as to, as to properties and effect from between one another. So if, say, for example, we have uh, we have a vase here. It has a different lighting as far as the background goes, and the background, of course, is affected by whatever it should be bounced off of this surface, as far as a renderosity type of effect. And uh, it's not really clear that it's actually affecting it. The other thing that I have a little bit of objection about uh, uh, about this type of sample is well, the overuse of ambient occlusion. Now. Mm, uh, uh, this is probably more of an opinion than anything else because omni inclusion does ha help for hyper hyper imagery. In other words, you're trying to uh, tailor, cater, or conform your image to what it is that you're you want to see, how you want uh, your area of space to look visually. But to me, this kind of makes the room look dirty. <laughs> you know, there's far too much omni inclusion uh, based on the amount of lighting level that is actually contained within this room. So uh, that's another factor. So um, the, the things that uh, I wouldn't say they're a fail, but uh, could have been taken to a little bit more is, um, is to take into consideration less ambient occlusion is better. Uh, you know, uh, ambient occlusion is a stylization choice. Uh, Physics-based engine should be able to generate its own ambient occlusion based on, based on an algorithm as being part of a physically correct lighting solution. So you should be able to light a room exactly like uh, it should if this was a real room and you just put a, say, turn, you know, pitch back light and we turn on this light, then the lighting behavior across the entire surfaces within the room should behave as to expectations. If that's what we're looking for, uh, if we're looking for realism versus realistic kind of idea. Okay, so um, just sort of covering this up a little bit quicker. Let's take a, a let's just let it dry, take a test drive through it, just let it play through, uh, and uh, we'll see. This is this is the stock sample as it would be normally uh, uh, when you download it. So when you download it, there's no, nothing that's changed. This is the raw, out of the box, you know, put the batteries in, let it fly, and uh, let's take a look at, and see it. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, and uh, <clears throat> kind of move, to move things on forward to see some of the things that you could do that are really super simple in concept to actually improve the overall lighting tonal balance uh, without having to do anything fancy using the stock scene here. Okay, so this is the room with all the with the stuff in it. So let's take a look at the room. Uh, we're going to get an error because I, I basically just deleted the sound sample so I didn't have to do it to all my samples. And this is the room without all the, uh, you know, out its empty room with that we basically took out all the uh, out all the furniture to get a good look at how it would render out without any refractions coming from uh, any kind of soft surfaces and what have you so without the f furniture <laughs> you know uh, not much of a difference between the uh, tonal quality and the overall feel of the lighting in the environment uh, um, except for if we take the curtains away of course we get uh, a much let's say deeper penetration of the lighting into the room we still have a, a, a that's hot to cool uh you know hot shower to cold pool type of effect going from front to back there's no lighting balance it's not graded or gradient properly f from what i would expect this to look like if i was coming into this room and i was going looking at this as uh, as being real and i was going to you know this is a place i was thinking of buying you know uh this is you know this 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 lighting depth is not what i would actually expect from something that is facing directly into the sunlight kind of idea. Okay, so uh, let's move on and uh, uh, we'll start getting into some of the things that uh, 
look at what I've done to kind of, let's say, upsize things a bit. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and play through this right now. Boom. Uh, 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 okay, I haven't had the chance to actually properly light this for uh, fix some up the UV mapping at, uh, that occurred in some places. But uh, um, as you can see, we have much more... Uh, 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 definitely a much higher gradient from front to back between the lighting difference from the front uh, that's being in direct sunlight, sunlight blasting in through the front window uh, and, and bouncing off of white walls and giving us a proper depth. Uh, we'll s hopefully see that on the flip side. We flip over and you can see that we're definitely getting uh, a, a much more balanced all the way across. Now we can correct. We can correct the, the levels, of course, we're using post processes to make this uh, near perfect. But I, I think this is uh, far superior to what it was. Now, uh, the interesting thing about this is this was rendered out using draft mode. But some of the things that uh, I did to modify this, as far as being what I would consider are texturally more, um, let's say, uh, uh, physics-based uh, ready as compared to the other room, is the walls, the floor, the ceiling, and everything else connected to this is one big huge uh, piece of geometry. This this is not modular. It's this room is actually modeled in using edit in place, meaning that wherever I edit this in 3ds Max is where it's going to pop into into Unreal 4. So I can you know connect all the walls. So there's absolutely no 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 uh, let's say uh, uh, seams or cracks or crevices to get through. And uh, we'll just take this and see if we can do a visibility show only selected. Whoops, uh, of course I had the wrong thing selected. Let's go, let's go to Shift H, no Control H. Okay, we'll select the wall and uh, there would be nice. Okay, do I still have this selected? Yep, okay, visibility uh, only show selected. And that's it. This is just one complete wall. Uh, re <laughs> some really bad lighting up here. Well, not bad lighting, bad texturing. I didn't fix uh, fix the UV mapping in, in, uh, in uh, 3ds Max. I'd have to be mapped out properly, but uh, no doors or anything in it um, well balanced lighting and uh, if this is the draft mode and uh, and uh, and one single unit now the other correction that I made too as well is I totally totally absolutely turned off a, a uh, ambient occlusion it's uh, any of the occlusion marks that you see is being gener self generated based on the construction uh, that would uh, as you as you as you saw in the original one of chamfering all leading edges so as this uh, kind of uh, discoloration in the corners is totally based on the natural properties of the rendering engine and want to render out its light maps at 45 45 45 so that creates a much more smoother transition between one area and the other so it's not really too bad um I did, you know, uh, you can really get in here and tweak this up by do, go, changing your smoothing group angles and what have you. And this, uh, here's a good example uh, of a smooth transition. You're, it's really hard to see that angle change between the two of them, but you certainly get a, 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 an ambient occlusion off coming off of that edge that looks a lot more natural at least i think so now uh did i make any other changes in here did, okay I, uh, this is a solid uh, a solid one block object as far as room construction goes um it's a <coughs> it's a mm, it's a, the, 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 the turned off all the ambient occlusion we can actually see that you know ambient occlusion is for those uh, is for those things edges that cut into the wall as floaters so this is this piece here you can see extends back so uh, without without the AO type of effect being applied to this edge here of course we get this we get that hanging hanging frame on the window uh, on the wall effect there's no uh, separation between the wall and this item here and it's not what I would call grounded uh, as in it looks like it actually part of rather than just something that's just kind of floating in midair kind of thing so um, hmm, I think that kind of sets us up for the next example uh, the, 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 this room with backed again with the with the furniture and stuff and uh, uh, of course I get in the air and uh, this one here is the same uh, as the last scene but with all the furniture into it and I kind of fixed up the uh, the um, although I fi kind of fixed up the texture in a bit I didn't fix up the smoothing group effect there but uh, let's take what ha this is this is with high settings this has been rendered out with uh, uh, with production 
settings with a little bit of tweak but it's still the same room it's a one solid unit one piece uh, and uh, everything else is the same didn't change anything from the original to here uh, except for excluding the ambient occlusion and building the room as a solid one piece object so if I go go ahead and play now we're going to start seeing a little bit more light softness and we see a lot more color bleeding on the wall of the red as the light bounces off the floor and hits the wall and it's calculated between the two two surfaces now the reason why it would do that I'm assuming it's the same effect that you would have if you build a solid uh, object in, a, in an engine like 3ds max and you're running it out with metal array it's a single object so it's calculated using one uh, algorithm as as being being connected to that object so this is why we're getting a lot more red probably in the wall than we would if it was a if it was a if it was um, if this was here was uh, a modulator uh, a modular type of system because as we were talking before uh, the bookshelf has to be calculated and rendered to onto itself based on the wall next to it then the wall has to take into consideration with the object in this case a bookcase that is next to it so uh, here um, so since the floor is part of the same modular uh, same one single piece unit we're getting a much more distinct splashing of the light as it hits the surface and then much more evenness from front to back just simply based on the fact that it's only performing a calculation on one object uh, that makes up the entire room rather than about six different uh, subcomponents that are, are, are separate uh, and need to be calculated on its own. So we have one object, one calculation as opposed to six objects and six different types of calculations which does tend to create um, um, you know an inaccurate type of uh, 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 physics-based lighting solution so uh, I thought uh, this would be kind of interesting um, you know just to <laughs> I found it interesting I was one of those things that made hmm I wonder if uh, if we can use since it's a physics-based engine it has to follow the fools follow the rules of physics that would mean that anything that, uh, that would apply to any other type of physics engine should theoretically work inside of Unreal 4. So I think that really does kind of prove the point. Um, and uh, since, uh, you know, we're only talking minimum amount of geometry, I would, uh, if I was to make uh, even a playing area, volume of space, uh, I'm more of the mind now that uh, the better option, rather than going modular, is to build your entire environment as a... Uh, you know, room, Star Trek, a la Star Trek technique, where you build a room and then you transport it into the spaceship after the fact, blah, 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 yeah. Which is kind of funny because that's the way they build uh, ships nowadays anyways, or anything that's uh, significantly large, is they build uh, the modular piece and then just bring it into the environment. So, you know, building this room uh, in place and just uh, sort of start uh, legoing stuff together would probably be, uh, create uh, a much more pleasing lighting overall, rather than to try to build a room as modular. Uh, and then once we have have it in place into our starship, so to speak, uh, then put on the uh, deco uh, trim and what have you. Even the floorboard trim here, this trim here is part of the room as <laughs> a uh, one solid piece. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, I, you know, uh, uh, with the with the um, with the viz aspect starting to it's starting to take off. Um, I, I think it's just a combination of things. It's, it's a combination of finally uh, uh, an engine that is actually wor easy to work with. I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, the tools that are in Unreal 4 are actually built for people to use them. It's the, the, you don't need a rocket scientist. Uh, I mean, or, or even a user manual. I mean, how often does somebody actually say, well, you know, I don't know how this works. I better get the user, I better get the manual out. <laughs> Nobody reads the manual, so uh, a lot of the tools that they use are very intuitive. Uh, it just takes new getting used to. Um, this physics-based rendering engine, which is kind of aligning it with the uh, with the rest of what uh, what the, the the rest of the world is going as far as as both uh, realistic as well as hyper-realism um, imagery goes. Uh, FBX definitely definitely a strong FBX importer. Uh, probably makes a difference on any application you use because it allows for a greater uh, level of transportability. It's the first, de well, we could do a whole topic on that, but uh, FBX is probably the first true uh, DCC uh, digitally created content wrapper where you can take whatever you make in one application and move it into the other. Uh, and it really is up to an application like Unreal 4 to take advantage of what can be stored to it. So, um, uh, uh, Houdini. Houdini uh, uses the uh, point cache system to be able to move uh, 
move uh, geometry out of one application into the other. So you could do like the Lord of the Rings to uh, tower kind of crashing down with all the stuff flying out and whatever have you, and then import that if Unreal 4 supported uh, point cache data, then it then you can you can create these uh, really massive earthquake type of effects and, and and your special effect inside of Unreal 4 inside your video game would look no different than it would look like in say um, in say the movie 2012. You could really duplicate it if you wanted to. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, oh, and of course uh, VR. So this has sort of attracted the uh, obviously. Those combinations have started to uh, attract uh, a, a synergy about uh, using uh, Unreal 4 for uh, for previs or, or for archviz, which <laughs> in all reality, there is no difference between making this as an environment as a, an environment that you can play to play video games in, unless, of course, you start using ray trace because uh, it uses light maps, which is just as cheap if we put in a lot of detail into this, we have a lot of books, we have a lot of tables and chairs and TV sets and what have you. This environment would be just uh, a totally acceptable as a, as a, as a, a viz realistic rendering as it would be to throw it in your video game and just use it for as one of your rooms in your hotel room uh, or in your hotel that you're building. Okay, so um, I think that's uh, enough for this. Um, Mm, I don't think there's really any much to, to speak of. Uh, just to kind of back up a bit, um, I'm, you know, I'd like to get uh, Blade Killer onto the show uh, uh, at some uh, at some point, and then we're going to go over some of the uh, the pipeline changes and uh, 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 things of interest. So, uh, and of course, for anybody that has kind of uh, wandered in here, that's what these videos are all about. They're video blogs to kind of keep our our own third party interest. We have a significantly sized uh, community that uh, you know who are let's say one tenth of, or one tenth of one percent of those are interested in these kind of things so uh, it's uh, you know alt F, you know press alt uh, f9 start up shadow play and off we go so we'll call this one done see ya